Okay, right, welcome back to this uh, video on the gamma function. So we're now in part two of our discussion. Right, okay, uh, so I uh, stated two things here, that this function was defined on x is greater than zero, and that uh, the gamma function was equal, gamma evaluated at x was equal to x minus one factorial. I need to give explanations for these two things. So the first one that is easy, let's do, uh, sorry, the second one is easy rather, that x, it, it, that this function is defined find on x is greater than or e greater than zero and the reason is that uh, that uh, this integral is going to be defined providing is going to have a finite value providing x is greater than zero so as as uh, t approaches infinity this exponential is going to get absolutely tiny and it's going to shrink at a rate totally that dominates this uh, this polynomial this po it, it will overtake basically so this function whatever happens this function is going to get very very small as you approach uh, infinity basically and at zero what's going to happen if x is a positive value this is just going to go to zero basically so it might look something like that maybe if uh, x is a neg sorry sorry if x is take it back if this exponential, if the exponent here, the x minus 1, is greater than 0, it will go to 0 as t approaches 0. If this is negative, which corresponds to x being less than 1, uh, i.e. between 0 and 1, then this thing will blow up. However, uh, the intuition is that even integrals like t to the... Um, if, if you have t to the power of x minus 1 and you're integrating that dt... Um, between let's say uh, zero and well, it's not. It's going to not. Well, if we integrate it between zero and one, um, because this this uh, power here, this exponent, is uh, is only negative by. Uh, it's not. It's not too negative. Basically, is the intuition. It's no. It's not more negative than negative one. It's not to the left of negative one. If it's negative, it's between negative one and zero because x is greater than zero, which implies that x minus one is greater than negative one. So, whatever this thing is, when you integrate it. And what you do obviously is raise the power by one and divide by the new power. When you raise the power by one, this is going to become positive again. And then when you evaluate it at zero, it's not going to blow up anymore. So this integral will be finite. And let me just work it out for you. So you raise this integral, uh, this um, this to the power. Uh, you raise the power by one and then divide through by the new power and evaluate between zero and one. So what you then get is one over x minus 0 value to the power of x, which is just 0, uh, divided by x, which is still just 0. So you get 1 over x, which is a finite value. So that's the intuition for why you can cope with this, why this integral is even defined, uh, providing providing that um, x is greater than 0. That Because even though this function, dot, this integrand, if this, if this, um, if this power, this exponent here, is negative, then this integrand will converge, will, will, you know, it will blow up as t approaches zero. However, the integral doesn't. You can still integrate over it, even though it doesn't seem as though you would. If this power is greater than zero, sorry, uh, more negative than negative one, sorry, uh, then even when you, when you integrate it, uh, you don't get something that's going to converge. The integral is going to blow up just as the integrand blows up. Okay, uh, so that's why the function is only defined on x greater than zero because this uh, this integral isn't defined if x is equal to zero or below. Right. So uh, now let's go on to the bigger question, which is why uh, this function is equal to x minus one factorial. Okay. Right. Uh, so the way we're going to prove this is uh, by induction. Okay. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is prove that it's true uh, for x is equal to 1. So, let's prove that gamma of 1 is equal uh, to um, 1 minus 1 factorial. So, we're going, to, we're going to do a proof by induction. So, let's do it formally. Let's say proof by induction, by induction, 
and now we're doing the basis stage. So we're setting the foundations for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, prove that this result is true when x is equal to 1. Okay, then what we're going to do is assume it is true for an arbitrary integer. So we're going to say assume it's true for k, where k is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. You can't do it for this gamma of 0, because gamma of 0 is negative 1. Uh, no, that's not good. Uh, this it only works for numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. like that. And the natural numbers, in other words. So these are the natural numbers. Okay? So we're going to prove that it's true for 1. We're then going to assume it's true for an arbitrary natural number. And we're going to prove that if it's true for an arbitrary natural number, k, then it's true for the next one along. So if it's true for k, it's true for the next one along, k plus 1. And then if it's true for k plus 1, what we can then do is say, OK, it was true for 1. Just use 1 as your k. Then it's going to be true for k plus 1, which in this case is 1 plus 1, which is 2. But if it's true for 2, you use 2 as your k. Two, it's then true for 2 plus 1, which is 3. And you can just go on and on. And it's therefore true for all natural numbers. OK, right. So proof by induction. The gamma of 1 is equal to 0 factorial, which is by definition 1. So we want to prove that gamma of 1 is equal to 1. Now, gamma of 1 by definition, this is what we want to show, right, by the way. This isn't necessarily true. This is what we want to show. What's true by definition is that it's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the power of 1 minus 1 e to the negative t dt. Well, that's very nice because you get t to the power of 0. OK, yes, um, at 0 you have problems that 0 to the power of 0 is undefined, uh, but that's not going to affect the integral. So we'll just assume that t to the power of 0 is just 1, and then we'll get e to the negative t dt. The reason it doesn't affect the integral is that the point 0 has the length 0. OK, so. Uh, integrated between 0 and infinity, basically. And then, uh, so, um, uh, just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, what we're effectively doing is taking the integral of that area there. Here's the ne negative exponential. Uh, so you can think of it like that. So this is e to the negative t. Here's our variable t. And we're basically taking that area under there. OK, so by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, this is the antiderivative evaluated at infinity minus the antiderivative evaluated at 0. So uh, the antiderivative of e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t. And we want to evaluate that between 0 and infinity. Now, if we evaluate the negative exponential at infinity, what we're going to get is negative e to the negative, excuse me, the um, the uh, sloppy notation, but I'm just going to stick in infinity there. Of course, I really should take the limit as n approaches infinity, but you know what I mean. Minus negative e to the negative 0. OK, right. E as e uh, as you converge on negative infinity, this converges on 0. So that goes. The negatives cancel when you get a positive, And then e to the negative 0, e to the 0, is just equal to 1. So we get 1, basically, that this integral is equal to 1, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. 1 is equal to 0 factorial, therefore gamma of 1 is indeed equal to 0 factorial. So we have done our basis step now. OK, right, so onwards with this proof by induction. OK, so next step in the proof is the assumption step. So we assume that the statement is true for n is equal to, uh, sorry, for x is equal to k. Assume true for x is equal to k. So k, where k is a natural number. k is an element of the natural number. So, OK, right. Uh, so that means that gamma of uh, k is equal to k minus 1 factorial. OK, so now what we want to show, to show, and this is the inductive step now, that this implies, uh, to show this implies, this is what we want to show, implies gamma of k plus 1 is equal to, well, k plus 1 minus 1 factorial. OK, so by definition, what is gamma of k plus 1? So uh, let me just remove this and bring this up. So gamma of k plus 1, uh, just by definition, is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, uh, t to the power of k plus 1 minus 1, uh, e to the negative uh, t dt. OK, so that's just the definition of the gamma function, just with k plus 1 plugged in. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the k, e to the negative t dt, right? 
OK, now we're going to apply integration by parts. So a little bit of a recap of the integration by parts formula. OK, so uh, how do you do this again? Right, so um, let's just derive the integration by parts formula because I can't remember it. So if you differentiate uh, with respect to x, f of x times g of x, then the product rule tells us that that is f prime of x, g of x, uh, plus g prime of x, f of x. OK, so if we anti-differentiate, which we know is the same as integrate, uh, in the real numbers at least, so if we anti-differentiate both sides, we get the f of x, g of x, so we're at integrating effectively both sides between a and b, uh, dx, and then this side, a, b, dx, then it's the antiderivative of this evaluated at between a and b. So that thing there evaluated between a and b, basically. Now, uh, this side, we get the integral of a, b, f prime of x, g of x, uh, dx, plus the integral of, between a and b of g prime of x, f of x, dx. OK, right, so we then get that the integral between a and b of f prime of x, g of x, dx, is equal to f of x, and I'll write it out in full, f of b, g of b, minus f of a, g of a, uh, and then we take this thing over to the other side, minus the integral from a to b of g prime of x, f of x, dx. Right. OK, so there we have the integration by parts formula. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to view this thing, this e to the negative t, as our f prime of x. And we're going to view this t to the k as our g of x, basically. OK, so f prime of x is equal to e to the negative t, which implies that f of x, the antiderivative of e to the negative t, is equal to negative e to the negative t, OK? And g of x is equal to, what did we say? Not e to the negative t, it's t to the k. And that implies that g prime of x, uh, ugh, ugh, what's happened here? Why have we not got x? Oh dear, yes. Um, this should have been, well, I've confused the notation here, big style, uh, because my variable up here was t and my variable here is x. How confusing. Right, okay, uh, so replace the x with the t, the t wins out. So um, x goes, and we're replacing it with t. Uh, so, right, g prime of t is equal to k t to the k minus 1. So just differentiating this, you d reduce the power by 1 and multiply by the old power. Uh, that's just basic differentiation laws. Uh, OK. Right, uh, so plug those into this formula. Of course, these are all t's now, so t, t, uh, t, t down there. And we get that the integral... The integral of uh, this side is going to be e to the negative t, uh, t to the k, uh, dt, uh, between, uh, well, the integrals are zero, uh, the limits are zero and infinity. And that this side is going to be uh, evaluated at b. Uh, again, forgive me the sloppy notation. Oh, well, actually, I'll put it. Limit as n approaches infinity of um, negative, we're putting these two in now, negative e to the negative n, and then this side here, k, and then we're evaluating it at n, so we substitute n for t to the k minus 1, and then we subtract off it evaluated at a, now a is being viewed as 0, so minus uh, f at 0, which is negative e to the negative 0, times g at 0, which is 0 to the power of k, OK? And then subtract off the integral of g prime of t, which is this thing here, k t to the k minus 1, and then f of t, which is negative e to the negative t, and I do apologize if it, you can't, if this is getting difficult to see, uh, dt evaluated between 0 and infinity. And we'll continue this in the next video.